Every village, town, or city has many different buildings. Think about all of the buildings you see around you every day. They all look different and have a different purpose. This is true of the buildings here at Mission San Luis. Today we're going to talk about a particularly special building at Mission San Luis, the Council House. Hi and welcome! You've come at a great time because this week the Appalachia are going to replace some of the giant pine logs that make up the inside of the Council House. Now the Appalachia are incredible woodworkers and builders, so it's going to be quite the feat to watch them at work. So which building here in the center of town do you think is the council house? Well, you're right. It's this building right here. It's really tall, isn't it? Look at it. Wow. That's crazy. It took a lot of materials to build it. So the Appalachia use pine trunks from the pine tree to build the main frame of the council house. Now those are the big trunks in the middle with all of the branches and all the pine needles taken off so it's just that trunk in the middle. And once they have that frame, they're going to cover it with tens of thousands of these palm fronds or palm leaves. Now these palm fronds and palm leaves are thatched together to make the outside of the council house. So, pine trees and palm leaves may sound like a strange combination of things and materials to build a building, but they grow here in North Florida and they're so common that it just makes sense to build your house out of it. Now think about it. We usually use what we have in our environment to build these buildings and to build buildings around us because they're so common. There's so much of it that we can build these buildings so easily and not have to worry about going so far away to get new materials. Now the pine trees that make up the very center and the main structure of the council house come from about 20 miles to the north of here and they have to be transported to Mission San Luis. And the palm fronds, the palm leaves, come from around the coast which is all the way down in the St. Mark's area. So we're making north to get the trees, south to get the fronds, and then when we come together we're going to make all of those buildings out of it. Now, can you imagine every single Appalachian building is made of palm fronds and it has palm fronds on the outside? That's a whole lot of palm. So where do you think that the roof and the walls of the council house are in this building? Now, see, the council house roof is actually the walls. So as you can see, it goes all the way up, all the way down. That's the roof. Now, that might sound a little strange, but think about, say, a tent that our soldiers use when they're out camping. A tent has the roof that also make up the walls, so it's not the most outlandish thing to think about. So to make the outside of the council house, palm leaves are first folded into thirds. So you take one side in, you fold one side in, and then when it's all nice and straight and in the middle like this, you do that for multiple, multiple leaves, and then you tie them together. Now, once those have been tied together, they're tied onto the structure of the building, these little skinnier logs that go around the outside, and then once they are tied on, another layer is put on top. So these layers and layers and layers make up what we call a thatched roof. So this thatching is going to actually keep the inside of the council house quite dry. Now with any plant that you harvest, eventually it's going to turn less green, it's going to go more brown, it's going to deteriorate over time. So uh, you can see how this pine, or uh, this palm frond is slowly dying. It's not quite there yet, but it's going there. Eventually, it'll turn out like this one. That is just old, falling apart, just gonna fall apart in your hands. The littlest amount of pressure is gonna make it break apart. Now, that exact same process is gonna happen with the outside of the council house here. All of that thatching eventually is going to break down, it's going to rot, and when that happens, there's gonna be holes in the roof coming out. That's gonna let in animals, that can let in the rain, let in the wind, and so every year, every couple of years, every so often, when the roof gets really bad, the Appalachia would have to rethatch the entire roof. Now think about all the work that goes into building a council house like this, making it in the first place out of the pine and palm and then having to replace it. So actually remember, they're replacing the pine logs inside this week. So if you want to come on inside, we can look at a few of them. Come on. As you can see, the Appalachian needed a whole lot of pine trees to make the inside and the structure of the council house. Now you can see that they used the thicker ones to make the central posts. Those central posts keep up the main frame and then all these extra logs on the outside are then put on top to form the main roof. Now the thatching is then going to be put on the little rungs, as you can see the little, little lines of tinier pine trees, those 
are where the thatching is going to be attached. Now, getting these massive logs into place is quite a feat. Now, we, I wasn't here when they were doing it, but I feel like it just it makes sense to me that they probably used really strong, sturdy ropes tied them to the ends and then pulled the logs up. So once they were in place, then they could attach the beams on the top. And then once all of those beams are in place, the main structure is done, then they could pull up these little pine trees. And then from there, more pine trees. And eventually with all these pines and palm fronds, you can make a wonderful council house. So the council house is much, much taller than any other building of Appalachian construction here at Mission San Luis. Now, there's a reason for that. It's about five stories tall. That's about 10 regular sized people all on top of each other go straighten up. It's amazing. And the main reason that you want this building so big is that it stands out. So the rest of the buildings are much smaller. When you want to come into Mission San Luis, you come to the top of the hill, you see this building first. And because of that, you get a feeling that this building is really important, especially important to this particular village. Now, think about other very tall buildings that you've seen around in your life. Is there a reason that they're so tall? Do they make you feel a certain way? Probably, right? So that's exactly the point of the council house, because here it's very important for political reasons, spiritual reasons, and just social reasons. So its importance is shown through how big of a building it is. Now the huge fire here in the center of the council house is very important for the Appalachia as it represents the spirits of their ancestors. It's a way for the Appalachia to remember and honor their family, their history, and their community. Now dances and other ceremonies would take place around the fire, and the chief would meet with his council on these raised platforms or barbacoas that are closest to the fire. On the outskirts, close to the wall of the council house are another series of barbacoas, and that's where travelers would be able to stay if they're passing through the village. So sometimes travelers come in here and they ask me about the large hole in the roof of the council house. Now don't worry, a little rainstorm isn't gonna put out the Appalachian fire on the inside, but a large fire is gonna you know, be pretty big. A big rainstorm could put it out, so if that happens, we can take a little bit of the fire, bring it off to the outside of the council house, and then keep it going. Now when it rains in here, we're actually gonna stay quite dry. And the reason for that is because the roof of the council house is so sloped that only the water that goes straight through the top of the hole is gonna come straight down and it's not gonna get anyone on the inside. Most of the barbacoas here, unless the rain is going really hard, really fast, a lot of wind, you're gonna stay completely dry. So if you look in the middle of the floor, you can see how the floor is slightly different color than the rest of the council house. In the middle here, it's a lot darker, it's a little greener, and that's because all of the rain is coming down just in this one spot when it gets really, really uh, rainy. The outside is gonna stay a lot lighter because it's gonna stay dry throughout those storms because of the sloped roof. So why have a giant hole in the roof? Now, remember, we have this giant fire that's going around all the time, and that's gonna produce a lot of smoke. So by having that hole, that smoke is gonna be able to go out of the council house, it's also gonna let all that sunlight come in. And you have to make sure that that smoke comes out of the council house because if you don't, it's gonna get too smoky in here, it's gonna make everyone kinda sick, it's gonna be hard to talk to, you're not gonna be able to see very well. And by having that hole, just letting all that smoke come out, everyone's gonna have a much better time inside. Now, if you looked at the door that we came in just a second ago, the door is actually a lot smaller than an average person. That way, when you're walking in, you have to bow down low, and some people believe that that is a sign of respect for the place. But another reason is that by keeping the door small, it keeps the smoke from being sucked out of the door, and instead allowing the smoke to go up through the hole in the roof from the central fire. So as I mentioned earlier, the barbacoas that are closest to the fire are for the chief and his council. So when they come together, they have their council, they would talk about the concerns of the village, how to resolve them, the talks about our crop schedules, when uh, there are any issues in the community, they would come and talk about those, but also when they have to talk about war or any sort of other fighting, they would do all of those meetings here at the council house. Now, the tallest barbacoa here is for the chief, so that he is above everyone else. The next ones to his left and right are slightly lower than his, but still taller than the rest of the barbacoas. Those would be for his counselors, for his right-hand man, and the people that could help him make decisions more easily. And then the rest of the barbacoas 
are for the Warriors and other noted ball game players without the community so that they could give their thoughts and help with the community's decision making with the chief. So again, the height of the barbacoas communicate very important information. The tallest for the chief, second tallest for his counselors, third tallest for the rest of the important people of the village. Now, having them up in the first place is really important for a completely different reason. That's because of all the bugs that can get here in Florida. Now, having them off the ground is going to keep all the creepy crawly bugs from getting on to us as much. But also, we have them up and we put light these little fires underneath them called smudge pits. Now, those smudge pits, we can put things that are going to produce a lot of smoke, like burning corn cobs. And that smoke is going to allow for the people on top of the barbacoas to not have to worry about bugs like the ones around me. And so, by having that smudge pit smoke, you're going to be able to keep those bugs off, but it's going to be just enough that it's not going to be too much of a problem to be able to talk to the chief, talk to your fellow council members, and that way our village meetings can go by much smoother. So just like the roof of the council house, the barbacoas here have many different functions inside. So buildings are built based on the purpose that they are needed for. You know, we've kind of covered that a little bit for the council house, being big to draw people to it, having all these spaces for meetings, having a fire for ceremonies and symbolism. Now think about your own house. Think about all the buildings that you usually go and visit. Is there a reason that they're built the way? Do they have some sort of purpose or function by being one story or two stories tall or having stairs over here or having a room over there? Try and think of what is the purpose of them? What, why are these rooms different? So speaking of other buildings here in the village, the Appalachia houses are built quite similar to the council house here, but much, much, much smaller. Now they're going to be made out of pine and palm, just like the council house. They're going to be circular in nature with a central fire, just like the council house, and with a hole, just like the council house. So imagine a council house that is slightly different